well, let's pivot and talk about Afghanistan. Um, you decided, as you mentioned earlier, you know, the pandemic had, ha had happened. You were itching to get out from South Korea. Um, you reached out, I, I imagine you reached out to Calvin and said, you know, I'd like to go. You both knew a lot of news organizations had already pulled out. So why don't you talk us through that process and how did you came, how did you both come to the decision to go ahead and go? And then one, well, one step at a time, how did you come to that decision? I think it was, uh, you want me to start? Go ahead, sure. yeah. Go okay. Ahead. I think it was uh, before the country fell. I remember like August 12 or 13, I, I, we were starting to see like, you know, the news of like districts falling out, you know, districts after districts falling to the Taliban. And, and I, I, I kind of sounded the emergency alarm and, and jumped on a meeting with Calvin and, and other managing editors uh, and, and, and other, others in leadership and, and to tell them like, I think this is happening. We got to go now. Um, and and made the case for it and 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 basically said like you know I, at the very least we I'm there earlier you know if it doesn't happen at least you know somebody's there uh, it's better to be it's better to be wrong in this you know it's better it better just to be there in person and I and because of the the previous trips I was very very fortunate to have um secured a, a long-term visa to afghanistan the year before thinking i might need it for the 20th anniversary of 9 11. and i think it was work that you know a lot of like legwork that was put in like year a year before that really paid off and i flew right in and landed on august 14th the day before the fall mm -hmm. and and i remember running out the telling calvin i'm gonna run out the door i'm gonna you know Go from the airport to the refugee camps and start reporting, and 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 we put out a you know our first uh, A one story that day. Yeah, so yeah, so Marcus was the one who actually uh, like um, said like this this place is going to fall quickly, and the rest of us was like yeah maybe a week two maybe a month and all. Marcus so, so that he really he, he felt like it was very urgent, and it turns out his in instincts was uh, totally totally right um but uh, so while he's there uh, soon after uh it became very dangerous and and uh, cnn new york times wash post ap started pulling journalists out and there was pressure um on me to pull marcus out because he was by himself had no support and uh, uh, a lot of the editors were saying like like what are you doing? You know, uh, get get him out ASAP. And um, I, I have to admit, I was really scared because, frankly, the last thing you need is to to say no, he's all right, and something happened to him. You know, it, it's the worst thing that could happen uh, to my career, to be honest, or to to Marcus too, by the way. But but so what? Happened? <laughs> I find by the way. <laughs> so but 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 I was more. In, about myself then. <laughs> so it, so I would talk to Marcus I said hey Marcus and, and then but then uh when we were discussing that uh or thinking about it he also got beat up he was at a rally and he got hit and he and that was where the the, the voices got louder what what get him out you, uh, make the call so I called Marcus and I said like look there's a lot of pressure to get you out um and and we may just have to do it. And Marcus, what do you what did you tell me? I uh, I just said I'm staying. I I would like to stay, and I would like to continue this this work. I we I think there's a lot at stake, and it's a very important moment. And 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 we should, you know, do you know not follow suit with everybody else. And it's worth staying. I think it was one person. It was easy. I was a small operation. We were a small operation compared to the rest of the outlets and it's easier to get me out of the country as you know and i had basically secured ex exit plans i would say um mm -hmm. to try to get out and and presented these exit plans to calvin and to make sure to reassure him like well if they tell you to to pull me out you know present these options to them basically yeah so yeah he he presented three option plans and i said okay I'll, i'm going to support you let's do it so so Marcus stayed. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, Marcus, go ahead. And I'm very thankful for that moment. And it, I think it kind of set the tone uh, very quickly about the kind of, and it, it reinforced the kind of ambitious you know, uh, ambitious journalism that we try have want to, wanted to do, and Calvin and I have talked about this for a while. And and sometimes in the face, some stories they, they say no picture is worth dying for, and that is one hundred percent true. But I've always believed some some stories, as, and especially one where it involves like U.S. involvement uh, and the co the consequences behind it, are worth teetering to the edge for. And so, how well you know the being on the ground clearly was dangerous you know the pressure from from your publication how were you able to still find the stories such as um the story we'll talk about in a few moments but how were you able to actually find the stories that you you did report on i felt it, it was one of those things where once you were on the ground, the stories just come up at you. I think it was a matter of going out every day for us. Uh, for me, in the in initial, uh, for the first uh, like eight eight or nine days uh, before my colleague Nabi Bulus joined me, it was the matter of like I'm not going to sit inside, you know, a, a compound or a, a shelter and wait us out. I'm going to go out. So every day I went out. Every day I went and poked my head around to see what was going on. Every day I went to like all the busy places, talked to people. And that's how I found my stories. Uh, I went to a market that went quiet and and just talked to like a, a business owner who sold uh, who sold uh, uh, burkas and bags and basically told me like burka sales uh, 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 are up basically. And, and also like told me like, and, and, and revealed that what kind of sales or what kind of styles of dresses are popular since the Taliban took over. And you don't glean that unless you go out and talk to people, you don't learn all this stuff, you know? Um, it, and, and also just talking to everyday people. One of the important things that really helped me with my coverage, and, and this is very, I, I thought very crucial, was Calvin and I, and I think this is important, it reveals like how important a relationship between the editor and the person on the ground is, you know? And and Calvin and I had years to build this relationship and and and, and we studied in the beginning, the first couple of days of the fall, we studied the media coverage of what was going on all across the board. We looked at CNN, we looked at the Watch Post, the New York Times, everybody, BBC, uh, everybody influential, and we we uh, and Calvin asked me, "What do you see? What patterns do you see?" And I think we identified that a lot of a lot of media outlets were looking at this historic moment through the eyes of the victor. Basically, everybody wanted to know what the Taliban was about, and only was talking and was fiercely talking about that. And I think Calvin, being like you know a, a great sports enthusiast, and he's a sports photo editor on the side too. And he always tells me like the best stories are the ones when you turn your lens away from the guys holding a trophy and, and look at the guys walking away from the field. And so we decided that we were going to look at this historic moment through the eyes of the everyday Afghans. 